Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new here, thank you so much for subscribing. And for those who have been here with me, thank you so much for sticking around. Today's video is on PCOS. Um, I have two videos already on my page about my PCOS story and my thoughts and takes on PCOS. But I thought I would update you all um, and just answer a few questions that I've gotten on my Instagram page. If you are not following me on Instagram, you should go follow me at breaking up with obesity um so pcos pcos is a metabolic um, disorder or disease pcos is a genetic hormonal disorder it affects i believe one in ten women um all over the world you would think it's just in the united states but no it's actually all over the world um some of the symptoms that most women suffer from is cystic ovaries insulin resistance obesity diabetes Uterine cancer is something that women can get, but it's rare. Infertility is very um, popular, um, and it sucks. I don't know if I'm fertile or not, but because I'm Christian, I don't really care what statistics say. I know I'm fertile. I'm going to have like a million kids. Not a million, but you know, I'm going to have a lot of kids. Anyways, um, some of the other symptoms that women with PCOS suffer from are male pattern baldness, Facial hair, hair on your chest, hair on your back. Basically, we are hairy. We are hairy, okay? I always tease the guys in my life that if I really wanted to, I could grow a full mustache before you do. And it's really that real. Like, I would come up to the camera now and show you guys what I have, but we're going to save that for another video because it's not cute. Not at all. Um, but yeah. So PCOS, I was diagnosed when I was 13. Back when I was diagnosed, there was really no information about PCOS. Like, I got diagnosed at 13. Actually, correction, I got diagnosed at 14. I'm sorry. And even then, there was still very little information about PCOS. I was diagnosed via blood work. I had blood testing done in order to get my diagnosis. Um, after my diagnosis, I was not treated up until I was about... 18 years old, that's when I started getting treatments for the PCOS. The first treatment I got for my PCOS was I was put on metformin. I was put on 500 milligrams twice a day. It did nothing for me. No weight loss, no period, no less facial hair, no reduction in the male pattern baldness that I suffer from. My hair was still falling out right in the middle. Um, nothing worked. So again, I, I stopped taking it and I just continued without any medications for a while. Um, then again at 20, I went to an endocrinologist. And the reason I went to an endocrinologist is because endocrinologists, they study the endocrine system. So they understand it more than just a general or a regular doctor is what I call them. So basically, I went to the endocrinologist and got on the scale. I was 264 pounds. She basically told me if you were to gain 10 more pounds, you would go from being pre-diabetic to being diabetic. And that was all she had to say. That was enough for me. Like those words, diabetes, like diabetic, to me back then when I heard that, I thought shorter lifespan. Um, and that was just based on what I was taught in school, that if you get diabetes, it cuts your lifespan. So when she told me that, something went off in my head. And literally, after I left her office, everything changed. Um, before I left her office, she put me on 1,000 milligrams of metformin twice a day. It was disgusting. Um, but I lost weight. With the metformin, I went home. I joined the gym. I joined a gym that was still being built. When I tell you I was scared shitless, I was scared of diabetes and I was not going to get it. If I could do anything to not get diabetes, I was going to do my part and I did it. I signed up for that gym. I started, I basically went cold turkey. I stopped eating sugar. I stopped drinking juice. I stopped drinking soda. I stopped eating ice cream. I stopped eating junk food, period. I joined my fitness pal. I made friends on there. I started calculating what I was eating. I set my goal at 1200 calories a day. I 
stuck with it and I stuck with the metformin twice a day. I stuck with taking 2,000, 2000 milligrams of metformin twice a day at a 1200 calorie diet. Let's just say my body didn't like it. Metformin suppressed my appetite to the point that I had to force myself to eat. Metformin made me so nauseous that the smell of food was disgusting. Metformin gave me the worst diarrhea. Metformin made me sluggish. Metformin made me lose weight because I starved myself. Basically, I hate metformin. And I get a lot of women asking me, my doctor put me on metformin, what do you think? I said, I'm not a doctor, but here's my opinion on metformin. It's not the best way to treat PCOS. And doctors throw it at women like, you have PCOS, here's metformin. Metformin is not this magic cure for PCOS. Metformin does not solve all the symptoms. Metformin does not fix it. It's met metformin does not cure it. So to the fact that they still give out metformin in 2019 is ridiculous. Excuse me. Um, I lost 60 pounds in less than eight months on metformin and cardio. And the reason I say and cardio is because if you follow me on Instagram, I show pictures of myself after I had lost weight. I was bony. I was skinny. And that was my goal when I took the metformin. I wanted to be skinny and I didn't want to get diabetes. I did cardio for two hours a day, sometimes three hours with my best friend. We would go to the gym and go from cardio machine to cardio machine to cardio machine. Like literally just one machine to the next machine. We spent 30 to 60 minutes on one machine and just stay there for however long. And we did that for months. She lost some weight. I lost a lot of weight because again, I was barely eating and I was taking metformin. So it got to the point where my mom had to intervene on the weight loss. She was like, you know what? Stop. You're losing too much weight and you're losing it in a very unhealthy manner. So I need you to stop. Plus taking this metformin long-term is not good for your liver. My number one fear in life is to die because of something that I did to myself. So again, she mentioned it's not good for your liver. So my head runs wild and I'm just like, I'm killing my liver. I'm going to die from liver disease. I'm going to die because my liver. So basically, I stopped taking metformin. And I noticed that the weight started coming back slowly. And But I didn't think much of it. I was just like, oh, you know, I got lazy. School was busy. But the weight came back. It was coming back. It came back. In about a year and a half, I had gained back the 60 pounds I lost plus another 6 pounds. So I gained back 66 pounds in a year and a half. And when I say it, it was a mental fuck, it was hard. I was disappointed in myself and I found myself desperate to lose the weight. So I ran back to my doctor and asked for metformin and I asked for her to increase my dosage because I was hooked. This drug helped me lose weight. Put me back on it. At this point, my period was regular. My skin had gotten better. My male pattern baldness had subsided. I was natural. I was doing better with my hair care. The facial hair was still there. It wasn't gonna go anywhere. But my period was regular. But the weight was coming back. And in my mind, I thought, I didn't want to be fat. I had all these skinny girl clothes. I was wearing a size 10, 12. I didn't want to have to go buy a size 16 and 18 and 20 again. Um, so I wanted to lose the weight. Plus, I was afraid that my period would stop. And it did. After I gained the weight back, my period stopped. Um, so she put me on metformin. She increased the dosage from 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams twice a day. So I went from taking 2,000 milligrams a day to taking 3,000 milligrams a day. But this time, it did nothing. I didn't lose weight. I was still nauseous. I still had diarrhea. Um, my period didn't come. I was still 266 pounds. Um, so I took myself off the medication, and I told myself I would never go back on metformin again. So what did I do? I did my research. I just did as much research as I could, and I think it was the research that basically saved me. I started lifting weights in order to build some lean body mass. 
I reduced the amount of cardio I was doing and I changed the kind of cardio I did. I started doing HIT instead of steady state cardio. I did high intensity cardio because women with PCOS, the more muscle we have, the better. So I did cardio that would not eat away at the muscle that I was trying to build. Now I was a beginner at building muscle, but I did my part. I did research, I asked for help at the gym, I made friends with a bunch of guys at the gym and they helped me. And soon enough, I was losing weight. Yes, I was losing it at a very slow rate, but I was losing weight naturally. And it excited me because at some point I thought I could not lose weight naturally. I thought I had to take metformin in order to lose weight. And my body proved to me that I didn't have to do that. All I had to do was just be consistent and stick with it. So I was losing weight, but again, at a very slow rate. Like when I say slow, I mean like slow. Like one pound every month, slow. Um, and I honestly think it was because of my eating. So a few years pass, I'm still lifting. Um, but then I come across this diet, keto like no um so I start keto actually before keto I did low carbs I did low carbs and I saw that my body responded to it better but I like carbs so I was stubborn and I went back to eating it and again my weight stalled my period started doing like this it would come on time and then not come on time come on time and then not come on time and in trying out these different diets I was able to see what affected my body positively and what affected my body negatively so carbs affected my body negatively carbs gave up on me i didn't give up on carbs carbs gave up on me i wanted to make the relationship work but they were not willing to try so i had to give it up i had to give I gave up carbs. Uh-huh. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> the reason I started keto was because I did some research. I basically looked up the correlation between keto and PCOS. What did it do? How did it help us? What does it do for the body? Um, the number one thing I saw was it helped you lose weight. And I wanted to lose weight. So I started keto. I, again, was losing weight, but at a very slow rate. But I was building muscle and my body fat was instead dropping at a very steady and consistent rate. So although the scale was not moving down, my body fat just kept dropping. Uh, my body fat before I started low carb and keto was 46%. When I did low carbs, it got down to the 30s and just stayed there. When I did keto, I got down to about 29%. So now when women come to me asking, do you think I should do keto? Um, do you think it's worth it for PCOS? My answer is yes and no, because not everybody who has PCOS has a problem with carbs. I personally suffer from insulin resistance, so I can't eat carbs because my body does not process it well. Um, and if I keep eating carbs at the rate at which I was eating it before, I would probably end up diabetic. So in giving up carbs to adopt a ketogenic lifestyle, I was doing it for my health, first and foremost. It's not for the weight. Um, my weight is always going to do this. But I need my health to do this. I need my periods to be consistent um, until I decide to get pregnant. I need my body to last me until the Lord calls me home. And in order to do so, I have to do my part. And in doing my part, I did my research. I adopted a lifestyle that is going to guarantee I lose the body fat that contributes to the craziness in my hormones. Keto balances my hormones. And that was the number one reason why I adopted the lifestyle. So with, with PCOS, at this moment, I do not take any medications. I stopped taking medications with um, PCOS. I want to say about five years ago. That's when I entirely dumped medications. Now, do I take supplements? I do. 
but these supplements are not for PCOS. They're just for overall health. And I will share that with you all in another video. So be on the lookout. Um, with PCOS, a lot has changed since I got diagnosed 13 years ago. One thing that I've noticed since I got diagnosed, there are more women coming forward and saying they have PCOS. When I was diagnosed, I did not have that support. I did not have women coming forward. I was a teenager with a body that didn't work. That's what I thought. My body did not work. Um, there were little chats and forums online for PCOS, but most of the women, no offense, were Caucasian. I am black. Um, I need to see somebody who looks like me sharing their story so that I know I'll be okay. And I did not see that. A lot of the women who were on these forums suffer from cystic ovaries. I don't have cystic ovaries. They knew they were infertile. I was 13. I wasn't trying to have kids. I didn't even know what sex was. Um, actually, I didn't know what sex was because I took sex education, but I was nowhere near having sex. Um, a lot of them suffer from acne. I didn't have acne. So a lot of their symptoms, I didn't have. So I could not relate to these women. And a lot of them were older women. So it was just like, I could not find someone my age to tell me that PCOS is not a terminal disease. It's just a disorder. Yes, there's no cure, but there is a treatment. And with a treatment, you can basically live a life that is normal. And I didn't get that. Um, so that's one major thing that has changed with PCOS since I got diagnosed 13 years ago. There's a lot more information about it. Um, PCOS is not just found in America. There are women all over the world suffering from PCOS. So that was another thing. It's just like, oh my God, I'm African. So PCOS is not limited to just people in America. There are people outside of the world, outside of America, who suffer from PCOS. There are probably girls in my country, in Cameroon, who have PCOS. So that was another thing. It was great to learn that PCOS was not just in America. Um, PCOS is genetic. So somewhere in my mother's lineage is probably where I got it from. Maybe. Um, PCOS does not have a cure, but you can treat it so well that your, your, your symptoms just go away. Like they don't disappear, but they just don't flare up. Um, and that's another thing that's changed. Another thing with PCOS that has changed is there are more ways to treat it now. It's not just take this metformin. There are so many other ways you can treat it. There are holistic ways. There are natural ways. You can still take metformin. Um, pharmaceutical companies will never let that go. But there are so many ways to treat it now. When I got diagnosed, the number one way to treat it, take metformin. Um, and there's... The number one thing about PCOS that I love so much nowadays is there's so many women coming forward and just like supporting one another. And it's amazing because for women who are my age currently and for young girls who are my age when I got diagnosed, it's amazing to have that. It's amazing to see that. Um, and that's the number one thing I love that has changed since I got diagnosed. Another thing that has changed is... Um, Basically, research on diets that help women. So, this these research, I think, is probably the number one thing that is amazing. Like, knowing that I could adopt a low-carb, ketogenic lifestyle and it treat my PCOS without me having to pop any pills is amazing to me. Um, seeing women go to the gym and lift weights to build this lean muscle, which in turn helps their PCOS and helps the symptoms is amazing. So there are so many resources now than from when I got diagnosed that it, could, it would be easy to be jealous, but I'm not jealous. I'm actually happy about it because I, there's no teenager out here who has to go through what I had, I went through. When I was diagnosed with PCOS, I was just alone. And it's great to know that women who get diagnosed nowadays are not alone. Um, my sisters didn't have PCOS. My sisters still don't have PCOS. Nobody in my family really had PCOS. My biological mother passed away, so I didn't know whether she had it or not. So there was no way for me to ask her. She had four kids. One of them passed. But she had three kids, so it's just like, if she could have kids, then that means she doesn't have it. 
but that's not the case. A lot of women who have PCOS can have kids. A lot of women who have PCOS cannot have kids. Um, so I was lost, but I'm happy to know that, or I'm happy that nowadays young women who get diagnosed don't end up lost, don't end up feeling alone, don't end up feeling like it's just them, like no one else has this disorder or this disease or this syndrome. Um, it's amazing. And then even for women who suffer from infertility, nowadays there are more resources to help them. Back then, they weren't that many resources. Um, if you suffer from infertility nowadays, you could easily go and do IVF. Not easily, but you know, you have the option of IVF, which is crazy expensive, but at least you have that option. I know people who've had kids through IVF, so it's just like our first lady, Michelle Obama, had two of her kids through IVF, so that's awesome to me. So that's another thing that has changed with PCOS, it's just... There's so many other um, outlets. There's so many ways for you to learn more about it. There's so many people you can talk to. Instagram is huge. Um, Facebook is huge. There are groups, there are forums, there are like support systems. There's a PCOS committee or something that goes to DC and speaks to the Senate and Congress. Like there's so much and it's amazing. When I was diagnosed, you barely had a Google picture of what the ovaries look like. So it's great. Um, I always say I don't have PCOS uh, or PCOS doesn't have me. I have PCOS, meaning I have a grasp on this disorder. It does not control me. I control it. I know how to treat it. I know what causes it to flare. I know what to do in order to keep it from flaring. So with that being said, my PCOS story is just one from brokenness to triumph. Um, and that's why I always tell people, I'm not just living with PCOS, I'm thriving with PCOS. Um, you wouldn't know I had it. If you look at how I used to look 10 years ago compared to how I look today, I don't look like I have it. And that's why I tell a lot of people, when you get diagnosed with PCOS, it doesn't just end there. There's so much more that you could be doing. Um, your body is not failing you. Your body is not failing you. You can live well with PCOS. You can have children by the grace of God with PCOS. Um, PCOS may cause you to gain weight, but so does eating junk food. I don't know. Um, if you stuck around this long, I thank you for watching. I am going to be doing a 10 episode series on the 10 things I hate about PCOS. Although I've come to accept having PCOS, some of these symptoms still get on my last damn nerve. Like this facial hair that y'all just can't see, but I wish you guys could. I have on makeup so you can't see it. But I promise you I hate it. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Please, 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 please subscribe, like, comment, and just hang around. I have so much more coming. I'm happy to be back on YouTube. I know I take these hiatus, which is not on purpose, but I'm back. And I plan to do more. So keep an eye out for the series, 10 Things I Hate About PCOS.